Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you this morning. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a couple of announcements. There will be no trustees meeting today. Uh, praise and Bible study will be canceled tonight so that I can rest my eye. Um, session will, the praise team will meet on Thursday and session will meet next Tuesday. Annual congregational meeting will be the 24th. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? To clarify, there is no meal on the congregational meeting. There will be no meal. It will be here. We will meet right after worship service on the 24th. Yes, Walter. Yes, and uh, I especially want to express my gratitude to the appreciation for you being able to attend my sister's funeral. Um, the obituary, her obituary being left in the paper. And uh, uh, the viewings like Tuesday nights at 8 and the funeral was 1 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. Yep. And that's down in Greengrass. Okay, anything else? Greet one another. And shall we stand?
this week. Thank you, Father, for just loving us. Thank you, Father, for loving us in spite of sometimes who we are and what we do. But we just come before you, giving you the glory and thanking you for your sweet salvation in Jesus. And it's all because of your love for us that you've shown us in Jesus. And it's in his name that we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He is my rock. He is my fortress. He I've been keeping him busy with my uh, smashing fingers and pinching fingers, but I still got all of them. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, I've just... God is good. God is good. Yep. What was that? I, you know, he, I just had an awesome week. Okay, praise God. Yep. Awesome is better than awful. That's right. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, Sally. We had a nice day yesterday. I got her in and involved, and the kids came down and spent the day. And they took a walk outside, and it was kind of cool, but we got out some old VHS home videos of when our kids were young. Church events, some people, uh, different things, vacation Bible school. And there was a Christmas program with Burke Cabins and Melvin Curlin, who did a lot of the part in it. It was a really nice thing to see. Okay, good. Not old memories. Anybody else? It's good to see Donna back. 
thing this morning that I saw you watch too many commercials. <laughs> For those of you who will get her Facebook page, you will know what I'm still talking about. <laughs> Anything else? Let us sing. We praise thee, O God, our Redeemer. share this little tidbit with you that I have sensed and I'm not saying that it is prophetic by any means but I have sensed this in my spirit 
that because of the recent election, revival will have a chance to start. Yep. No doubt. Because we're going to need revival. Yep. And hopefully people will begin to catch that. And, and if that's the only reason the election went the way it is, because this could well be the last, re, the last revival we see. Yep. So uh, keep that as a matter of prayer too. That revival happened. So praise God. Hallelujah. Any other prayer requests? Actually, it wasn't a prayer request. That was a great announcement. But you have a prayer request? Okay. Yeah, keep those going. Any? Yeah. Debbie Cleaner has to go back for some more surgery. She her, she has infection in the left side. So she will need more surgery. Jess? So we need to get rid of that demon prince that's hanging over your trailer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Let's pray. Oh, victorious Lord, we give yes. you thanks and praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, nothing's impossible with you. And we stand in agreement this morning that Jesus will be Lord. That's right. Yep. We stand in agreement today that that Lordship will prevail over every situation and circumstance on this prayer card this morning. Father, that the power of your Holy Spirit will be released in these lives, <clears throat> that the Lordship of Jesus will prevail, that no demonic force can win. That's right. Yep. Father, we stand against all of the enemy's attacks against us, Father, and we gloriously praise you and thank you because, Father, you inhabit the praises of your people. And we're going to praise you because we know that we still win. That's right. Father, thank you. Thank you for the attacks that come upon us because, Father, if we're not being attacked, then, Father, we're probably already in the wrong camp. That's right. Thank you, Father, that the enemy sees us as enemies. That's right. And we rejoice that we are in your camp. We thank you, Father. We just ask that the power of your Holy Spirit would be released upon the lives that we're praying for, upon our lives when the enemy attacks, that we have that calm confidence that Jesus is still the winner for us. Amen. So, Father, just bless them where they are this morning. Let your presence be experienced by them for your glory. Father, for our, our first responders, for our military, for the police. Father, in Jesus' name, be with them today. Father, we lift up those families that have lost loved ones this, this past week because of, in some cases, stupidity. But Father, we know that in all of these circumstances and situations, you still have a plan to work out for your glory. Right. Father, help them to open up their hearts, those families that have lost loved ones today or this weekend, and find, find a reality that Jesus is still Lord regardless. So comfort them, counsel them, be their rock, their fortress today. Thank you, Father, for this country. Thank you, Father, that you're still we still pledge that we believe and trust in you. That's right. And Father, 
even though that may be removed from some things, Father, it's not going to be removed from your church. Right. Your church is going to stand. We're going to become triumphant and victorious because of Jesus. That's right. Thank you. And so, Father, we just pray for our leaders that they will come to the recognition and realization that only when we trust in you and that we do things your way will we be blessed. Help them to recognize and realize that. Let revival happen in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that both Jew and Arab would come to recognize Jesus as the Lord of their lives as well, so that peace can truly be in existence in the Middle East. Father, all these things, we give you the thanks and the praise, all because of Jesus. And it's in his name we join our voices and pray the prayer he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's receive our morning tithes and offerings. <laughs> right what happens if you point if you go the wrong way crash yeah that's exactly right this particular one says what follow God and not the world go God's way that's what it says right well what way is God's way Jesus says what? I am the what? The way. Jesus said, I'm the way. So if we're going to follow God and do it His way and not the world's way, we've got to follow Jesus. We've got to follow Jesus. Had you been here last week and seen the bulletin, you'd have seen a little boy following in his daddy's footsteps. Did you see it? That's 
how we follow God is we put our feet in the steps of Jesus. We follow Jesus. Doing it God's way, not the world's way. The world takes us in the wrong direction. But God will always take us in the right direction and bless us. Follow Jesus. I don't know what's down there, but my shoes aren't taken with it. Follow Jesus. That's the way. Pray with me. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you for him showing us how much you love us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing then, O love that will not let me go. Christians 
become one of the slowest growing religious organizations in the world. Which is very strange because the message that we have is so powerful and positive when so many other religions are so negative and destructive. Unloving. Or just let whoever does do whatever they want to do. Which is the whole world's concept almost today. Those who are not religious just, you know, just tolerate the people who have similar ideas and persecute those who don't. The world has nothing, and let me emphasize it, nothing to offer the church. The world has nothing to offer the church. We have everything to offer the world. I want us to look at the fact that initially we have been chosen out of the world. One of the things that sometimes we miss, and I want to emphasize, and I probably will emphasize it a couple times during this sermon, is that we're only passing through, we're only sojourners here. This is not our final destination. And I don't care whether you're a believer or a non-believer, this is not our final destination. The reality is, is that we're either going to heaven or we're going to hell. Right. There's no other place to go. And if we follow the world, the world's going to take us to hell. Now, much, many people in the life of what they call the church today, and I really question that term in most situations, won't even talk about hell. Certainly won't preach about it. But the reality is, is that there's only those two alternatives. And just because you want to go to heaven, isn't going to get you there. That's right. There's an old song that came out many, many years ago when I was a kid. Too many talk about heaven ain't going there. Too many talking about heaven ain't going there. Wishful thinking doesn't get you into heaven. Hello. We have been chosen out of the world. John 17, verse 6. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Chosen, given me, out of the world out of the world. They don't belong to the world anymore. You gave them to me. They were yours. You knew who, who was going to follow me. You knew. And they followed. Now in all reality, they also knew, God also knew, that Judas was going to be in the group. He knew that. I'm convinced, and I, I, I would be convinced beyond anybody else's interpretation for me at this point in time in my life, I believe Judas had a chance. Walking with Jesus for three years, Judas had a chance. But Judas' heart wasn't where it needed to be. Judas's heart was in the world. He could never separate himself from the world. And because he couldn't separate himself from the world, he still got caught up in it. Just because we warm a pew or even stand behind a pulpit doesn't guarantee anything. The question we have to face is are we doing it God's way? Are we following Jesus? Is Jesus our answer? First Peter 
Peter writes this, this to a letter. You are a chosen generation, as we sang this morning, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Stopping there for a moment. He's called us out of darkness. He's called us out of the, what, what the, the condemnation of the world, the darkness of the world, the defeat of the world. Almost every time you would turn on the television and watch any news program or read any paper, you see nothing but darkness. Very few stories about the good things and the positive things and the powerful things that's going on because the church triumphant is standing to be God's people. Yep. You don't hear it. It's so important for us to begin to put into our hearts those things that are positive and powerful, the things that God wants us to meditate on. The things that are lovely and good and positive and encouraging so that we can be that way for one another. Especially as the dark times begin to come. That's right. We're going to have to be light and if nowhere else for one another during the struggles that are yet to face us. There are many people who believe that we, the church, will not go through tribulation. I want you to know I'm not one of those persons. I don't believe we're just going to be raptured out of here before any tribulation happens. Tell that to the Africans who are being destroyed because of their faith today. Or those who are in China. Even though revival is kind of breaking out in places in China, the government will start clamping down on them. We need to understand we have been very privileged in this nation. Yes. Yeah. But that privilege may be disappearing. Yep. It may still be okay to be called a Christian, but to be a follower of Jesus is going to be a different ballgame. Yep. When we begin to really follow God's way, follow in His foot, in the footsteps of Jesus, doing it Jesus' way, we're going to have to be the light for one another. We're going to have to be the encouragement for one another. And then Peter goes on to say, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. The world has a sneaky way of infringing upon us. Wanting us to do things that if we're following Jesus, we just can't do. We just wouldn't want to do. The world has a way of sneaking up on us because that's the devil's way. It, wouldn't it be so much easier if, if we could recognize the devil wearing a red suit and horns and a tail? Wouldn't that be easy? He doesn't work that way. He's still, believe it or not, an angel of light. He's still the most beautiful angel that was ever existed. And because of that beauty, he, he, he detracts us. Sin has a pleasure for a moment, but its costs are extreme. We've been called out of this world We've been called to be a very special kind of people. A holy people, Peter says. A holy people. We will be hated by the world. Jesus tells us in John 17, I've given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Did they hate Jesus? Yep. His followers are going to be hated. His followers are going to be hated. What was interesting was when the Jesus movement happened, 
back when I was still a teenager and going to college, when that Jesus movement broke out, the church refused to receive those flower kids, those Jesus kids from the beaches. Only a few churches, especially out on the West Coast, because that's where it kind of broke out in, 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 in great bunches, the churches out there refused to accept those dirty little urchins to come in. My friends, one of the things that we need to focus on in the recognition of anything beyond anything else is that dirty little urchins is who Jesus died for. That's right. And at one time, regardless of what our background was, we were one of them. The world around me thought I was a good old boy. They really did. But when I was faced and confronted with the Word of God in the powerful way that He that He got a hold of me, I began to recognize that I was far, far from a good old boy. See, it doesn't make any difference how long we've sat in pews and how long we how many meetings we attend and how much money we put in the offering plate. Th those things don't matter. God's not interested in that stuff. How many of you know God owns the cattle on a thousand hills? The last time I looked, he owned the hills too. Yeah, that's right. God doesn't need our money. The church operates on, on the money. And God's taken some of the filthy lucre of the world and blessed the church with it. But the reality is, is God doesn't need it. God doesn't need our praise. One of the things that, I'm, that we're learning on, on Sunday night is God's all sufficient. He doesn't need anything. And sometimes I've asked the question, well, why did you create us? Why did you create us? He said, I created you for you. So that you will have the opportunity to come to know me and who I am. It's not that God needed to create us. God created us so that we could know him. It would certainly have been an easier world if God would not have put humans on it. I had a woman, one of my boss ladies, when I was working on the farm, she said it'd be a great life if it wasn't for people. Hello? Mm -hmm. The sad thing is, is that a lot of them are in the church. Hello? Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that, that if we allow the world to come in and take charge of the church, we've lost everything. I was sharing something with, a, with someone the other day. I, I forget what they were talking about, but in, in the course of that conversation, somebody that, that was fairly new to me, and, and they asked me about my name, and I said that they had forgotten what my name was, and I said, well, you forgot nothing, but if you forget Jesus, you forgot it all. Hello? Yep. Because if you forget Jesus, and the church is going to be challenged in the next several years, challenged to follow Jesus or to yield to the world. They are not of the world, and the world hates them. If you're standing for Jesus, I guarantee you will become hated. Yeah. I remember one of the places where I pastored, there was a strong demonic influence in that area. Very strong demonic influence. They had places underneath some bridges not very far from the town that I lived in where they were holding seances and they were doing, they were doing animal sacrifice. And 
And one of the things that happened in that whole process is that because I was coming against those forces of evil, my first wife decided not to follow me. Because she would not come to where I was fighting against demonic forces like that for fear of her family. I survived. God's plan for us is not to be concerned about what the world can do to us. Because let me tell you, the world didn't give me the joy that God had gave me and God, the world's not going to take it away. Yep. That's right. God is great. We're called out of the world and the world will hate us. But notice carefully Galatians 1, we've been delivered from the world. Grace to you and peace from God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our, of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age. And my friends, as truly as that might be true, when Paul wrote to the Galatians, that obviously is true today. Amen. Right. Yeah. And God will deliver us from this present evil age. God will do it. If we are following Jesus, God will take care of it. God fed a prophet with the ravens when he had no food. God protected the prophets in many ways, and yet most of them were sacrificed in so many ways on the idols of the world. But my friends, God is still in the deliverance business. And then the more we praise him, the more we give him the glory, the more we honor Jesus and honor his name, the more we do that, the more deliverance will be happening. That's the right. more that we will recognize that we are walking in victory, that we are more than conquerors because of Christ who loved us, that we are walking because Jesus is Lord and he is still in control. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you, Jesus. At the same time, that we've been called out of the world, we've been sent back to it. Jesus again in John 17. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they've received them. Stopping there since I underlined that. They've received my words. They've received them. They've made them a part of their existence. That's what they're working with. That's what they're walking on. They're living by my word. They've received it. They've made it their own. The words you gave me, I've given them, and they've received it. Moving on. And have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Yep. Verse 18. And as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Matthew 28. So go therefore... Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Even to the end of the age. That present evil age that we're living in. He's going to be with us. No matter what, he's with us as we follow him. As we do what he wants us to do, as we give glory to God. My God, my God, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, my God is our sustainers. He's the only one that can sustain us in everything. He's the only one that can protect us. He's the only one that can deliver us. And my friends, that's what he'll do. He's called us out of the world to receive his word, 
to live by his word, to go back to the world and tell the world about Jesus. Donna just played a few moments ago this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. A couple of those verses I think are so great. Don't let the devil blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. I won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And I add these words all the time. He's called us to be a special people. A holy people. His own priests to the world. Offering, if necessary, our own lives as sacrifice for His grace. Shining in the world, Philippians 2. Do all things without murmuring or disputing. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Hallelujah. Yep. You understand? Yep. In a perverse and crooked generation. Among whom you shine as lights. And that word lights means luminaries. I love to see luminaries. Do you like luminaries? Yep. The Christmas luminaries that they light on pathways. Love to see luminaries. That's what we're called to be. That we shine as luminaries in the world. Radiate Jesus to the world. And Matthew 5. So let your light shine. Radiate brilliancy before men. That they see your good works. And glorify your Father in heaven. Radiate. Radiate what God's done for us. Radiate what God's promised to us. Radiate the reality that we are a chosen people. We've been chosen. We've been separated. And though sometimes in our struggles we may wonder and even have doubts, the reality is that God has something reserved for us so special, so wonderful, so gracious as we pass through this life towards that great and glorious one to come. This life, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. But I'm still passing through. And I'm still sent to the world to share the great good news of God's love, His grace, and His mercy. Church, that's our calling. And if we don't do it now, it'll never happen here. As the only church in Fannisburg, and in some cases the only Christians Believers, followers, wherever it is you are, you're the light. And it's a light's going to make a difference in the darkness. It's got to come through us. As you have sent me, Jesus said to Father, so I said them. Send us. Be the light. Be the light in this dark old world around us. Let revival come again as the church becomes the light. Pray with me. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the challenge today. Thank you for your love in the midst of the challenge. Thank you, Father, that no matter no matter what we face in life, you're still giving us that conquering spirit within us. That we are more than conquerors because of Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. May we vow afresh and anew 
to give ourselves to you and to follow you that one way, Jesus, for your glory and in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As we sing this last hymn, if for some reason you sense that you need to come to the altar to renew your vows to be the light, the altar is open and I'll be happy to pray with you. Let us sing. Jesus' name, God's people said. Amen. Love one another.